Good morning. Welcome, a uh, special welcome, and thanks for joining us. It's good to get together to pray. A special welcome to our brothers and sisters who are joining us from their homes, thanks to the miracle of Zoom uh, electronics. If you have not done so already, please check your communication devices. Make sure that they, that they or any, anything beyond a cell phone are silent. Uh, to, to this morning, our associate pastor, Father Tony Cecil, will be presiding. Thank you. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we pray, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Before Mass, a couple people said, Happy 5th of July. So happy 5th of July. Happy Independence Day weekend. This weekend, we celebrate as Americans the great gift of our freedom. We celebrate the work and the sacrifices of the many men and women who have fought for that freedom first in the 18th century and since then until today. It is a beautiful gift. It's worthy of our celebration. It's worthy of our remembrance. And this weekend, that context creates for us an interesting contrast and connection to the gospel. So I want to talk to you about freedom. 
First, about freedom, how we generally see it and experience it in the world today. And then I want to talk about freedom as it truly is. Freedom as shown to us in the gospel. Freedom as shown to us in the life of Jesus. Because they're not the same. So freedom, what is it? What do we think it is? And more importantly, how do we live it? Because, of course, how we live shows what we truly believe. Now, most of us have probably taken an American history or a government class at some point, And when we think of freedom, we can so easily list all the freedoms that we learned about, right? Freedom to have representation in government, freedom for religious liberty, freedom for the press and speech and gathering, even protesting. The list of our freedoms goes on and on and on. But for so many Americans, and sometimes me, this spirit of freedom can become, and I think it has become, twisted into a license. A license for us to do whatever we want. To say exactly what is on our minds, no matter how harsh, no matter how it will affect others. To take another human being and their reputation and drag them through the deepest pile of mud that we can find because we disagree with them. To lie, because sometimes that brings us some benefit. To cheat, to steal, because that is the alleged secret to success. To be obnoxious for no other reason than the fact that we can. And whenever anyone calls us out on our behavior, we can so easily say, well, this is America. I can do whatever I want. Now, maybe that's a little harsh, but it causes us to think, to think about how we see and live this gift of our freedom, because all those things I mentioned are things that people do and think and believe, and you've probably seen them. This belief that freedom consists in doing what I want, what will make me happy and not having to think or care about anyone else and no one, not the government and certainly not the church, better ever tell me what to do, to think, to believe, or how to behave. And that, brothers and sisters, is a lie. That is not what freedom is. That's not worthy of our celebrations. That is individualism and relativism and selfishness and every other thing that exists in our society that is poison to us. None of that is freedom. So what is freedom? I think that Pope John Paul II hit the nail on the head when he said that freedom consists not in doing what we like, but having the right to do what we ought. Freedom consists not in doing what we like, but having the right to do what we ought. So what he's saying here is that real and true freedom acknowledges that other people exist. And not only do they exist, but that you and I have the duty, the responsibility, because of the gift of our freedom, to care about and take care of them, just like they have the responsibility to take care of us, to care about us. And this view of freedom takes into account who we are, not just as Americans, but as human beings. It takes into account who we are at our deepest level, that we are communal beings that exist to exist with others and to take care of one another. And so freedom is not just doing whatever I want or whatever I like, but it is living in a society and working for a society and calling for a society that gives you and I the right to do what we ought to do. It's not giving us the license to do whatever we want, but it's giving us the license to do what the right thing is, to take care of each other, to acknowledge that someone else exists, to realize that the world doesn't revolve around me. So suddenly that completely blows up our modern experience of freedom 
because it requires, it demands that we take other people into account, not just in addition to us, but I would say ahead of us, before us, that we think about them before we ever even think about ourselves. That, I think, is what the founders of this country envisioned. I think this is what we've been fighting for for so long. This is what so many men and women throughout these 240 plus years have given their lives and their livelihoods for. And the gospel takes it a step further. These last two weekends, I had the great joy of attending the ordinations of some very dear and close friends of mine. And last weekend, uh, one of them, I think his brain just quit working and he asked me to preach at his first mass. So I spent a lot of time with that gospel because that's like a high pressure moment, right? This is his first mass and what am I going to say? So I spent a lot of time with that gospel. And I think that last weekend's gospel and this weekend's gospel connect very well. And they give us an illustration of what true abiding freedom is. So last weekend, Jesus says in the gospel, whoever finds their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. And this weekend, Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. You will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. So Jesus is creating this very stark contrast. And in doing so, he's telling you and I how to attain the happiness, the joy, the meaning, the fulfillment, the freedom that we all so desperately want. So how do we do it? To put it simply, we do it by throwing away everything that is not him and living for no one and no thing other than Jesus. Jesus says, whoever finds their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. What is he saying? Jesus is telling us that if we want to truly live, to truly live as who we were created to be, then we must live with and in and through him. That our life, our true life, the life we were created to have can only be found with God, not in the litany of things that we try so hard to replace God with. This weekend, he tells us something very much in contrast to our modern notion of freedom. He's saying to us, do you want to be free? Do you want to live? then come to me, take my yoke upon you, and you will find rest. And we hear that and we automatically see a problem, right? Because that yoke we so often think is just a burden. It's rules and regulations and policies and traditions that tell us how to live and how to act and what to do with our lives. But the yoke, brothers and sisters, is him. The yoke is Jesus. And yes, it's Jesus ministering to us through his bride, the church. And sometimes we struggle with that and that's fine. But the yoke is Jesus. And so it is only with God that we can be truly free. It is only in giving everything over to God and living for nothing but God's glory that you and I find a life that is truly worth living. It is only in taking on that yoke, that burden of Jesus, that burden of the cross, a burden which at the outset might seem too heavy, but we find is rather tolerable and even enjoyable. It is only there, it is only there that we find what we've always wanted with every fiber of our being. And this is because of who we are. Beautiful creations made in the image and likeness of God himself and who have been created and called to be the hands and feet and voice of Christ to the world, the light and the darkness. And so we have to ask ourselves, do we want to be free? Do we want to truly be free? Do we want to be who we were meant to be? 
And if the answer is yes, then we must go to Jesus, run to Jesus, live for Jesus, and throw everything out of our life that is not him. And no, it's not easy. No, sometimes it's not enjoyable. And yes, sometimes it is going to hurt. But at the end of the day, I have never met someone who at the end of their life said that it wasn't worth it. I've never met someone who said, who didn't say that they wouldn't do it a thousand times over again. So how do we do it? How do we go to Jesus? How do we run to Jesus? How do we throw everything out that is not Jesus? It starts here. It starts here with him, with Jesus in the Eucharist. Because in a few minutes, God is going to make a miracle happen in and through my hands, and I will hold into the air the very presence of Jesus Christ. And I will say, as I do every time, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And that, brothers and sisters, is our task, to behold. To behold the Lamb of God. To be nourished by Jesus Christ himself, to let him break our hearts of stone, to let him break the chains and set us free. And then to leave this place and go out into the world bearing the light that is him and saying to weary souls, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Behold him who has set me free. Behold him who changes everything. If it doesn't start with him, everything we do is meaningless. So what is holding you back? Together now let us stand and with one voice profess the faith we share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's care for us, we now offer our prayers of petition.
Compassionate God, hear us. That bishops, pastors, and all Christians pattern their lives after the example of the master who came in humility to serve. We pray. Compassionate, Compassionate God, God, hear us. That leaders and citizens work to banish the weapons of war so that a new dominion of peace may reach to the ends of the earth. We pray. Compassion, God, hear us. That our nation, which we celebrate this weekend, will be united in building a society in which everyone can have the opportunity to live with dignity and hope. We pray. Compassionate Compassion God, God, hear us. That all members of our Eastern Area Community Ministries churches, as well as our Covenant churches of Anchorage Presbyterian and St. Luke's Episcopal, and our sister parish of San Lorenzo Martyr, reach out with care and love toward those who are heavy burdened. We pray. Compassion, God, hear us. That those who receive our Epiphany healing blankets and all who are weary in body, mind, or spirit find in Christ the rest they long for and in Christ's followers the assistance they need. We pray. Compassion, God, hear us. For those who have requested our prayers, for those who have died this week from illness, accident, or violence, especially George Ann Lamb, parishioner and mother of Michelle Richardson and Teresa Owens, and for Sandora Giamisi, for whom we offer this liturgy, we pray. Compassion. Hear us in the greatness of your compassion, O God, the people who cry out to you in need. Hear these prayers that we have offered you, and if they be according to your will, grant them, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, 
in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Martin de Porres, with San Lorenzo Martyr, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be safe.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There are a number of ways to demonstrate our freedom and continue our activity as a, as a community. If you are visiting Epiphany and would like more information about our parish, please stop at the welcome desk in the connector and pick up a welcome packet. Welcome ministers there can answer any questions that you might have about Epiphany. And please check the e-sign and the bulletin for other important announcements of this coming week.
Please remember uh, when we're leaving to dismiss yourselves from the back forward and to allow space between households so that we can keep our social distancing. And also please leave the kneeler in front of you down so that our volunteers know uh, which spaces need to be cleaned. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.